Hey guys, Klauf here, and today I will hopefully have a quick video showcasing how to use block displays. I might make separate videos for each of the different display types, although a lot of the rules from block displays can apply to item displays and text displays. There's just some special little weird stuff about some of the others, um, and maybe I'll get to them, maybe I won't. But anyways, I have actually been using block displays for quite a while now and just haven't made a video on them to showcase their capabilities and I figured now is as good a time as any. So the way that you summon them, they are a new mob added to the game. Uh, they are called block underscore display and they contain some MBT that you can always find on your favorite MBT website, MC Stacker. And on MC Stacker, you can go to the summon and they already have the block block display category. And so if we want to summon a one that is a grass block, we can just select that here and uh, then we can just copy this. But I will unpack a little bit of what's going on here. So the MBT follows the MBT format established by falling blocks. And so any falling block MBT will be similar to uh, block displays in the sense that they have this MBT called block state that indicates what block it is and the name is the block and then you can have additional properties with it. Uh, so that is as far as making a normal block display goes. One thing that's important is that the actual block display will be oriented to the uh, positive zero coordinate. So if you look at these three triangles in the middle of my screen, these three lines in the middle of my screen, they make up kind of the grid and it will always put the block starting at this corner. And so if you just summon one at the center of a block, you will actually see a block that is kind of off-centered, off centered, not centered to the actual block that it is uh, contained in. And so for that reason, when you spawn one, you should probably do something like align X, Y, Z to put those three arrows into the bottom corner and then the block will fill from there to be the normal shape. And I will just quickly show you what happens if I don't have a line X, Y, Z. Uh, it will basically just put the block like that because the center of the entity when I hit F3B is in the middle and the uh, display of the block by default it goes in the positive direction of all the axes. And so we just need a line X, Y, Z or you can do some transform stuff which I will show later. Uh, so next is the transform stuff that I just said. Um, so you can manipulate the transform of the block to make it do all kinds of weird and wacky stuff. The most typical application is going to be just to scale it up or rotate it or translate it, but you can always do like crazy odd shapes by a combination of left and right rotation. Now to actually build this stuff, it's not a matter of just guess and check. You can go onto this website, which is miso.github.io slash transform. And I'm actually going to minimize or reduce the size of my window since uh, it doesn't fit properly. <laughs> so on this, you basically have transformation and matrix. So matrix is a uh, the values that you input if you want to simplify or minify the MBT JSON. And uh, what this turns out to is it will just be a array of 16 numbers and kind of hard to manipulate later. If you're working with like uh, a data pack like this, you're going to want to use uh, not the array just so that you know what each thing is. Um, but if you're doing a generator like for animated Java, they work with the arrays because it doesn't matter to them since it's a generator that made it. Anyways, so you can mess with translation, which will move this physical block around. And as you might guess, if I do minus 0.5, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to type in here. Uh, in, into this input field because he has certain rules and restrictions. But if I do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then I do minus, it will center the block around the center of the origin, which is kind of some behavior you might actually want. Uh, for example, if you just want to rotate the block uh, with a TP command, you're going to want the origin to be at the center. Otherwise, the block will rotate about the uh, other directions. The next input you have, which this is where things get a little bit annoying to work with, is left and right rotation. So these are rotations of uh, counter and counterclockwise and clockwise. And so if I go with left rotation, that's going to move me uh, a certain way. It's hard to say really what is and isn't counterclockwise because you have three axes to rotate around. Um, but you can see that as I turn this, the thing rotates in the uh, y axis and now it's rotating in the x axis and now it's rotating in the z axis one this is where the annoying part comes in the actual rotation 
is not about the axis of the entity, it's actually about the axis of the block. And so you'll notice that as I spin this, you would hope that if I spin this, it will kind of pivot it around the Y axis since I did this translation thing. But in actuality, it doesn't pivot it, it pivots it about the corner. So this little section down here, and you can kind of see how it's pivoting it about that corner. So that can be a little bit annoying, but if you work with the in-games rotation like TP, uh, in combination with this, you can pretty much make anything happen. Uh, the last one to talk about is scale. So you can make the thing bigger. That's pretty straightforward. And so that's what I had done here. Once you have the transform that you want, you can just click this little copy button and then take a look at it. There's also these other things you can do, such as normalize and format to quaternion mode. Uh, quaternion mode is nice because then you can use like an angle around an axis. Uh, but we're not going to go too in depth of that. It's just different ways that you can transform it. Now, if we copy it, it's going to give us this long line of text, but at the very beginning of the text, it's missing the word transformation. So this is where the extra MBT comes in for. Uh, so we have that long thing of text. We add the word transformation, and then we paste the MBT right there. And so that's how you have this giant cube. Then the next thing is the animation, which is the one that I get the most questions about. So we are going to summon a block. And if you summon a block display without any transformation, it defaults to the original transformation values, which is just scale one, translation zero, rotation zero. Uh, and so now if we apply a, tr a later transformation to it, that is that giant cube, uh, we can make it, it will either instantly become that, or we can make it interpolate to that value if you want some kind of animation. And so the in start interpolation tells you the frame that it starts at and the interpolation duration tells you how long it will take. And so by default, most of the time when you're working with this, you're just going to set start interpolation to zero and interpolation duration to how many ticks you want this thing to take. So when I click it, you will see it gets scaled up over the span of 1.5 seconds, which is 30 ticks. There's a lot of other manipulation you can do by combining the start, messing with the start interpolation, but I'll leave that up to you to play around with. Uh, another interesting thing to note is if you just leave these two blank, you can see what happens here. Boom, it just pops up, although it does stay like that for a tick because it takes a tick for the command block to run. The last thing that I will leave you guys with is something kind of interesting to think about. So uh, if you're using really large blocks, I actually found it really useful to use a translation of minus uh, half of the size of the block. So in this case, the block scale is eight. And so I use minus four for the translation. And what this does is it puts the uh, center point of the uh, transform of the block display into the very center of the block, which allows you to do this, which spins the block around the place that the thing was spawned, which this can be a very useful technique to use for a variety of reasons. But as you can see, it's kind of spinning around that axis. Whereas this cube over here, it's not really spinning around the axis. And this cube here also not really spinning around the axis, not super helpful. So doing that kind of offset of translation of half the size of the block in each direction will allow you to use the entity's rotation axes as another way to manipulate the shape. Anyways, guys, that is it for this one. I will see you next time. Let me know what you want to see next. Uh, I am kind of open, been working a little bit on the uh, gun data pack again, but that one's kind of tricky. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.